Atlantic Canada sits squarely on the coast at the 45th parallel, the very place where tropical ocean currents meet with cold waters pouring in from the Arctic. This can make for highly chaotic weather, years with immense amounts of snow, or years like this one, where unseasonable rains caused by clashing air currents washed away the snow. But this made the forest accessible, and in this landscape, and in the absence of snow, these leafless northwoods revealed an extraordinarily rich trove of lichens, such as this one, Cladonia rangiferina, a snow-white lichen, inclined to grow in large patches, and which has been known as a traditional food in the far reaches of the north, such places as Scandinavia and among the Siberian aboriginals. And as it's often a winter food for caribou, this lichen is also known as caribou moss. Cladonia rangiferina grows on stones, so it's about impossible to see when there is snow on the ground. But snow or not, it's easy to see this tree-born lichen, if you can get out into the woods and find it. This is Lobaria pulmonaria. Both these lichen have some amazing properties. And today on MicroStory, we're going to take a look at each. Let's begin with the friendly Cladonia rangiferina, the caribou moss. This lichen, which can be made into food or other products fairly easily, is readily recognized by its beautiful snow-white hues and its antler-like branches, seen here under the stereo microscope, upper right center. To the naked eye, these branches might look like the solid growths of plants, perhaps also contributing to its traditional name of caribou moss. But if we increase the magnification just a little bit, we see the fungal component that is part of every lichen. Here revealed is a tangle of threads that comprise the lichen structure. These threads are the hyphae of the lichen-forming fungus, Lichenopeltella rangiferinae. Circled to the right is its symbiotic partner, an Algocello trabuxia irregularis. Moving to the compound microscope and putting a sample under intense light, we can see the algocells scattered throughout a dense webbing of the hyphae network. Every fungal structure, whether lichen or mushroom, is comprised of a dense network of hyphae, just like this. Lichens carefully sequester their symbiotic partners, shielding them from the sun and the elements. To see them clearly beneath the narrow planes of focus of a compound microscope, it was necessary to construct a focus-merged image. And now, with the image complete, we can zoom in on these half-dozen algal cells. But even then, we cannot see them clearly, as they are thoroughly surrounded by the hyphae which nourish them and harvest sugars from them at the same time. This is a good arrangement for the algae which are fragile and require the protection of their fungal partners. Cladonia rangiferina likes to grow in dense copses, and while many lichens which grow on rocks contain strong acids within their bodies, the acids of Cladonia are relatively weak by comparison. And while this allows Cladonia to be rendered relatively easily into a useful food, I think the most fascinating thing is that when we look at an image like this, we are seeing a farm. Or perhaps it is better to say, a co-op. And in this co-op, the fungi are the farmers, gathering nutrients and water for the algae partners. And the algae are the power plants. Here I have constricted light to flow outward from a central point over this paper-thin Cladonia sample and applied half a dozen other light manipulation techniques to create what I believe may be one of the clearest and most precise images ever created of the intimate bond between the Lichenopatella fungus and its Trabuxia algal partner. When many people look at Snow White Cladonia, the caribou moss, they don't really know what to make of it. Is it a fungus or some kind of plant? Something else entirely? But when people look at the Labaria pulmonaria lichen, almost without fail, they mistake it for a plant. Especially in the summer months after a rain, when it turns a dark green and can easily be mistaken for a kind of ivy especially in the way it appears to cling to trees. But if we cut a razor-thin slice of it and place that sample beneath a compound microscope at low magnification, its true, non-plant-like nature comes to the fore. Here in this false color transformation, we can see the fungal thallus, or body. The blue to the right and to the left at the edges are dense skins of fungal structure, and there is a spongy weave of hyphae between. Going in closer and looking to the left, we can see the dense mass of the Lobaria's algal partners. There are at least two algal partners in the Lobaria lichen. No stock forms the dense green mat. You can see it in these images lower left. 
The other algal partner is Dictyochloropsis reticulata. And the Labaria lichen may even partner with various cyanobacteria to fix nitrogen, greatly aiding its ability to grow and thrive. An amazing characteristic of the Labaria pulmonaria is that it frequently dries on its host tree, and when it does, the entire lichen goes dormant. Here's a desiccated bit of Labaria I harvested in the dead of winter. Now, lichens are notorious for their slow rate of growth and adaptation. In fact, many lichens grow only a centimeter every five years. But the ability of Labaria to spring back to life at the slightest bit of water, well, watch. A mere 30 seconds after receiving a bit of water, this Labaria has rehydrated and its algal partners are once again able to conduct photosynthesis. Now I'm going to speed time up 100 fold, which altogether amounts to just 7.5 minutes. And during this time you not only see the Labaria become once again able to photosynthesize, but its sponge-like body, formed by countless millions of hyphae threads, can almost instantly and effectively soak up a huge quantity of that water. You can see the Labaria fragments unfolding and expanding as it does so. With the mycelia and fungi, whether in mushrooms, lichens, or other forms of fungus are able to function properly within a forest, they can hold an immense amount of water, protecting the forest against drought and defending the land against flooding. Just one of the many wonders of the understory, revealed here in the microstory. Thank you for coming along on this voyage of discovery into the microstory. The microstory program is part of the understory network, a series of programs promoting education on the science of the natural world. Under our microstory playlist, you can find all the programs related to all things microscopic. In the understory playlist, we study animals, plants, and fungi, and issues of conservation. And in the Sky Story playlist, we explore astronomy and the world of astrophotography. Our programs are made possible by our many viewers, patrons, and students. And we owe all of you a profound thanks. And if you like what you see here, please take a moment to like and subscribe.